Hey Aries, welcome to your reading for May 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, go ahead and email me. My email is in the description box below. Uh, so time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So even though these messages are coming out dated for the month of May, if it is after May and you feel guided to watch this video, then there's most likely something that's going to resonate with you, whether it's something that you know happened in May of 2019 and you just didn't see this video during that month or it's something that's happening for you in that moment there's a message for you in this reading don't worry about the date yes um, and also we do have some cross watchers watching so please keep in mind that even though it may I may not be describing it exactly how it goes for you in your specific situation yet the message still resonates then place it where it fits okay and also don't try to place anything that doesn't fit it's just not a message for you so just leave it so keeping it cute with these monthly messages i'm doing something a little bit of the same and yet a little bit a little something something a little different <laughs> yeah um so i'm starting with the oracle not the uh tarot guidance using the uh, golden universal tarot and then i have the oracle guidance at the end of the reading again but this month i'm going with the crystal mandala oracle instead of the oracle of the unicorns yes all right aries let's just get straight to it <laughs> hi spirit please make me a clear channel for all aries sun moon rising and venus please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for may 2019 Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Aries. So in the pre-shuffle, in the beginning of the, before the reading here, uh, the King of Pentacles with the Magician came out and the Six of Cups was underneath the deck. Now, I just did the Pisces reading, okay? And in the overall energy for the actual reading for Pisces, the first card that came out was the Queen of Pentacles. So maybe you have both Aries and Pisces in major placements of your chart or um, you're an Aries and you are that King of Pentacles and you're manifesting a soulmate, which because the Six of Cups was underneath the deck in the pre-shuffle and the Six of Cups actually came out in the Pisces reading, all right? So maybe you are the masculine counterpart here and you are manifesting the soulmate or you're the feminine counterpart in the Queen of Pentacles energy and you're resonating or you're mass, you're, um manifesting your counterpart with the king of pentacles like maybe you're the piscean and you are manifesting a relationship and that person is actually like an aries somehow or you're already um uh, connecting with an Aries or you have Pisces and Aries in your chart and you're manifesting that counterpart okay which is pretty cool so you might want to go ahead and check out that Pisces reading too. It might resonate with you. All right, Aries. So I'm going to give this three more shuffles and we're going to get started and see what we've got for you this month. For my Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of May 2019. My Aries, my Aries, my Aries, Aries. One last shuffle and then we'll see what we've got. Okay, guys, here we go. Boop. Overall energy from Aries. Ah. The King of Cups. Okay. Very interesting because after I finished that Pisces reading, I was just doing the free shuffle. Uh, well, yeah, I was just shuffling through the cards, getting them all shuffled up really nice, preparing for the next reading. And I hadn't said anything. I was starting to kind of focus on the Aries energy, but I never really actually declared anything. But the King of Cups came out and it came out with the Page of Wands, but the Page of Wands fell out face down. All right. Um, there is love here. You might be in love with someone, Aries, or someone might be in love with you. Um, there's emotional maturity as well. You could be dealing with a water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, maybe a Scorpio specifically because the King of Cups is the Scorpio archetype. You might have that in your chart. Ooh, honey. First of all, Aries, here you are. 
the king, I'm sorry, the, uh, the emperor. But also, the emperor came out for the Pisces reading. So you really might want to watch that. Being the master of your own domain. Um, I, I kind of feel like if you are in love with someone, Aries, you're being very stoic about it. Like you're really not letting it show. You're really keeping your emotions in check. But for some of you, you're not afraid. You're really not afraid to take action. I just feel like it might not be time yet. Oh, with the Knight of Cups. Yes, yeah, someone wants to take some action. It could be you, Aries, or it could be the other person. Underneath the king, the Knight of <laughs> Underneath the Knight of Cups is the Knight of Wands, y'all. Ooh, ciao. Someone is sprung. You might want to really you might want to move pretty quickly, but you know you can't with this with this emperor energy or someone knows they can't. Okay, also the way this is falling, I'm seeing the Knight of Cups and the Knight of Wands are facing each other. So I do feel like for some of you, one of you has that cup of love that you want to give. The other of you might just have that lust and passion. Oh, wow. I'm also seeing some sort of counterpart situation. Even though these are both male masculine figures or male figures in these, in these knights... See how they're, okay, in the knights, it, look past the gender and look at what they're holding. One has the wand, the other has the cup. Essentially, I, I mean, think about it. One has the wand, the wand can fit in the cup. Are you, get, are, are you, are you catching my drift here? <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> oh God, I'm silly. But, but honestly, that's what I'm seeing. I'm, I am kind of seeing like a bit of a counterpart situation. Whereas one of you ha is the receptive energy. The other is the, um, is the active energy, okay? Now, outside of love or relationships here, I do see there is someone... Someone has really come to maybe, potentially you, Aries, but it could be the counterpart. It could be someone that you're connecting with. But most likely the Arian here has really grown up in the sense where they're, they're the master of their domain. They've taken their power back and they're in a place of emotional responsibility. Okay? Take, be in a place of accountability for your emotions. Like taking the really, it's one thing to like have, take your power back, but to be emotionally reckless. In this case, you're not. And I really do feel like you're living from an open hearted place here, but that I still feel a, a deep sense of stoicism with this emperor energy, okay? All right, Aries, getting into the rest of your messages here. Now, we're going first half and second half of the reading. You can look at it as the first half and the second halves of your month. If that resonates with you, please, by all means, go with that. But I personally recommend that you don't look at it that way. I recommend that you look at it as just the first half and the second half of your reading because energies are fluid. Time is an illusion. Energies do not move in a linear fashion. So just take the messages and just let them swirl around and place them where they fit. Okay? Excellent. First set of surrounding energies for you, Aries. In the first half of your reading here, you've got y'all. The Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles came out in the Pisces reading as the overall energy. The first card of the overall energy. And in the pre-shuffle, the King of Pentacles came out. Y'all. Counter parts. Now, you could be in that Queen of Pentacles energy, the receptive energy here, uh, waiting on the counterpart to come forward. Or, on the other hand, you could be the one, Aries, that is manifesting this Queen of Pentacles. Because remember, in the pre-shuffle, the King of Pentacles came out with the Magician, and then the Six of Cups was underneath the deck here, okay? So you could either be this Queen of Pentacles and manifesting your King of Pentacles, or you could be the King of Pentacles and manifesting your Queen of Pentacles, okay? Loving, nurturing, receptive, abundant, grounded, focused on family, focused on the home, focused on building your empire. Foc someone here, either you, Aries, or maybe the other person, maybe even both of you, are focused on having a home, having a family, and working towards that, okay? Queen of Pentacles is coupled with the Hermit. Okay, 
Um, this is Virgo energy. Also, you could be dealing with a Capricorn or another Earth sign, Taurus or Virgo. Uh, I do feel like either you, Aries, or the other person, somebody here is working on themselves internally in order to be that counterpart or in order to manifest that counterpart, okay? I'm also kind of even, yeah, I'm seeing it as like, you're focused on your intern, you're, you're focused internally and focused on shining your light to attract someone, the counterpart situation here, okay? Um, some of you are even coming to terms with the feminine energies within you and the nurturing, loving, caring, motherly type energy that that represents and uncovering it, clearing it up. So maybe even the person that you're connecting with or you, Aries, you are working through some sort of mommy issues. Like if you have a, a negative, ex you've had negative experiences with feminine energies in your life, maybe a mother, a grandmother, a grandparent, whatever, um, uh, even an, adop an adoptive parent, just the feminine energy in your life. I feel like some of you are working on healing that and that absolutely resonates with the King of Cups energy, taking responsibility, taking accountability. Now, even if you were a child and you had a negative experience with a, a, a mother or a feminine energy, you had no control over what that person was doing, but you do have control, of course, albeit after the fact, you do have control over your reaction to it. And I do feel like some of you are taking that power back and saying, okay, I know I reacted in certain ways, but also like, I'm going to give myself a little bit of the benefit of the doubt because I was a kid, but I'm an adult now and I can change my reaction to this. I can change the way I see this. I can change the way I react or I um, interact with feminine energies. I'm not going to allow that past situation to fuck my shit up anymore, <laughs> right? Okay. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Aries, you have the page of pentacles. Someone is thinking about commitment, but also someone is coming into a brand new level. This is a level up. You're trying to kind of find your footing. Um, the page of pentacles is a messenger. So there, a message of commitment could be coming forward towards you, Aries, or maybe you're the one that's looking to give some sort of message here because you also have the Knight of Cups, which is in your overall energy. And in the Pisces reading, there was an Ace of Pentacles, which was talking about receiving some sort of offer or manifesting some sort of offer or commitment, okay? Page of Pentacles is coupled with... Ah, the Ten of Wands, burden. There is some sort of burden here um, in terms of receiving some sort of message. And this really could just even be communication here. Maybe there is burden when it comes to trying to communicate with someone. Someone doesn't know how to talk to you or you don't know how to talk to them. <laughs> Also, this is the burden of reaching a new level and trying to find your footing. Or some of you are in the process, or maybe even the person that you're connected with, connecting with is in the process of releasing burdens in order to reach this new level or in order to make, send some sort of message and make some sort of commitment, okay? Could be in the process of this or is needing to do this. But I am seeing this Ten of Wands as a blockage towards whatever the Page of Pentacles wishes to present here, okay? The challenge in the first half of your reading here, you've got ooh, the Ace of Cups. The challenge is someone is in love. And you potentially don't know what to do about it, how to handle it, how to approach it. Now, this also could be a situation for some of you where your challenge is that you need to love yourself. You need to be, you need to work on filling your own cup. Um, in this, and uh, what I'm getting here is loving yourself enough to have the confidence to move forward, to take action on your feelings. King of Cups. Yes. Either you, Aries, or the person you're connecting with. Uh, the Ace of Cups is coupled with ha, the star. Healing. Your challenge is, I feel like for some of you, your wish fulfillment might be right in front of you. But the challenge is to recognize that and to take action on it, or the challenge is to love yourself enough to recognize it potentially. You also could be dealing with an Aquarian, or you could have Aquarius in your chart. Yeah. 
There's heart healing that needs to happen. Either I heard, I just heard, there's heart healing that needs to happen on the side of the King of Pentacles. Whoever represents this King of the King of Pentacles in your situation, they have heart healing they need to do. They have self confidence they need to do, uh, healing that they need to do. They have work to do in. Wow, I'm hearing they're near, they're need, they have work to do in terms of showing up for the person that they love. Take it as it resonates, okay? Your challenge or the closing message here for you, Aries, in the first half of your reading, you have the magician. The, I'm sorry, did I say the challenge? I meant this is the closing message or potential outcome. Um, closing message potential outcome you're manifesting exactly that which you desire you're in the process of manifesting this situation now going back to the challenge really quickly the challenge could be your dream come true of either receiving this offer or giving an offer to someone that truly means a lot to you and I want to say, guys, that you don't necessarily need to have known this person for an extended amount of time or X amount of time in this lifetime in order to feel like they really, you re they really mean something to you or you really care about them. You, if this is the case, then you, mostly, you most likely have a past life connection. Well, you most, yeah, you have a past life. Most likely you have a past life connection with this person. And if it's like an instant thing where it's like, I barely know you, but I care very deeply for you, you got some history. And the Six of Cups did come out in the pre-shuffle underneath the deck as the overall energy. So there really could be a soulmate on the horizon or you are manifesting this person into your life. Yeah. Okay, the magician is coupled with huh, the two of wands. A choice needs to be made. Figuring out how to move forward. Excuse me, guys. Figuring out how to move forward. Manifesting an opportunity to make something happen, to make things happen. Okay. I do, honestly, I do feel like what this is saying here is you have to make a decision. A choice needs to be made on what direction to take because you really are in the process of manifesting what you desire here. Okay, getting into the second half of your reading, first set of surrounding energies, you have ah, the six of wands. Victory is at hand. Pride and ego, yes, but this feels like victory. Leo energy also. Either you, Aries, or someone else is feeling very strong and very confident and it's showing. And it might be intimidating. It really might be. You just have this, either you or someone else or the other person that you're connected with, maybe even both of you, but somebody here has an air of confidence that is very attractive, very alluring, but also could be quite intimidating. That doesn't mean it's a bad thing. No one is telling you to lose your self-confidence just because it intimidates others. Absolutely not. But that's where they would need to do some growth, some healing, and love themselves enough to know, well, sure, this person is really confident and it just has this air about them and I really feel strongly for them. So if I love myself, then I'll love myself enough to take a chance, which could turn out to be very successful. Okay, Six of Wands is coupled with. Y'all, I'm losing my shit right now. The King of Pentacles. Ah! <laughs> I love it. I fucking love it. Victory is here. I think you found your counterpart. For some of you. Because not only did the Queen of Pentacles come out in the Pisces reading, and I was wondering if the King was going to come out. It didn't. But now here we are, Aries... And you've got both. So whoever embodies this King of Pentacles energy, the counterpart to the Queen of Pentacles, that you have been doing some deep soul work or soul searching inner work to heal 
in order to be with this person, to cross paths with this person, to be in a situation in which you are now in each other's vicinity. Take action because you are going to be successful. This is a win-win situation I'm hearing, okay? Beautiful. Ah. Yes, look, even... Now, Aries, this could be you, Aries, or it could be the person that you're connecting with, or maybe both of you have Aries as major placements in your chart, but someone is in love and is in wanting to take, it, take action somehow. Just do it. I mean, look, the King, of, the King of Cups and the Knight of Cups, okay? Just do it. Second set of surrounding energies in the second half of your reading here, Aries, you have... Whoa, the King of Swords. Now, the King of Swords also came out in the Pisces reading. But you see, there's diplomacy here. All right, look. You might be overthinking this. Somebody. Somebody might be overthinking this. But also, and this is kind of also feeling like knowing when the time to strike is. Or at least deciphering. Yeah, I, I feel like there's an overanalyzing in this situation. Someone is... Very detached, very aloof. You could be dealing with an Aquarian or another air sign, Gemini or Libra. But someone is very detached, very aloof, and is just kind of like trying to see things as they truly are, but is potentially overthinking it. Not, in, not letting their emotions get in the way, even though someone feels very strongly. This could be you, Aries, or it could be the other person. King of Swords is coupled with, yeah, I told you, somebody's overthinking the Nine of Swords. Someone is too wrapped up in logic and needs to let go of some of that logic and slip into your emotions a bit. Someone is really way overthinking this situation here. Okay. Now, this could be that King of Pentacles that is either needing to or wanting to take action. Maybe that's you, Aries. You could be the one that's needing or wanting to take action, but you're overthinking, all right? Maybe it's both of you. I don't feel like it, though. The feminine counterpart knows what's going on here. And actually, the feminine counterpart is very self-aware. So the, 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 the work that the feminine counterpart now... I'm talking energy, masculine and feminine. I'm not talking gender, okay? But the feminine counterpart has done a lot of a lot of soul searching is very self-aware and now that's kind of influencing this masculine counterpart to do some work internally as well but that might be getting to him king of swords nine of swords uh, there's almost an energy of not feeling worthy somehow just really overthinking the situation Especially with the Nine of Swords, I feel like someone is saying, holy shit, how am I ever going to get to this person's level? Don't worry about it. The thing that I like to say about um, people coming together and resonating with each other, you don't have to be exactly on the same level as the person that you're connecting with. I, I, I look at it as, as long as you guys are of a similar vibration in which you can harmonize... Because harmonizing is not about taking like, okay, let's think of it musically, right? You have uh, a C major triad. A triad is a chord, three notes, yes? So C major is C, uh, shit, hold on. C, E, G, yes? C, E, G, oh God, I really should know this, but I'm sorry, don't worry about it. But we'll say it's, yes, it's C, E, G, right? Those are the three notes. Now, those three notes are not the same note at all they're different notes but then when put together they harmonize they complement each other right so you don't have to be on the same level as this other person this counterpart situation as long as you guys can harmonize with each other somehow you don't have to be on the same level so, uh, on the same vibration so cut yourself some slack here whoever is overthinking cut yourself some slack it's really not that serious <laughs> okay i mean it kind of is but it's not whatever. The uh, challenge here in the second half of your reading you have, good golly Miss Molly, the Ten of Pentacles. Some of you really are either Aries, Pisces, Cuspers. You have Aries and Pisces in your charts. Like I'm an, as far as, now I subscribe to Eastern Astrology. 
I just find that it's way more accurate. And I've been watching a lot of videos lately where, in which I'm, I'm watching the, um, my Eastern charts and it's all resonating, okay? Um, so as far as Eastern Vedic or sidereal uh, uh, astrology, I am an Aries sun with a Pisces Venus, right? So Aries Pisces could be in your chart. Like, see, I'm just trying to give you guys an example. But the Ten of Pentacles came out for the Pisces energy, uh, the Pisces reading as well, okay? And in that reading, the Ten of Pentacles was representing time or being in, being in it for the long haul. Your challenge in the second half of your reading here is time itself, being in it for the long haul, taking the time to work through the situation so that you two can come together, if that is what you're resonating with. Now, with this Knight of Wands energy that's also underneath the deck, some of you might be feeling really hasty. But don't worry about that. If it comes to a fact, if it comes to a situation in which someone is too hasty and missteps and blah, 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 and worst case scenario, the shit falls apart, don't worry about it. There are going to be more options. At least take the time to learn that lesson so that you don't repeat the cycle. Okay. Ten of Pentacles is coupled with woo, the Ace of Swords. Truth, clarity, honesty, integrity, epiphany, aha moments, seeing things clearly. Also, uh, the Ace of Swords, in my, addition, in my um, opinion, could be learning. Learning about each other, taking the time to learn about each other. But also, taking the time, and yeah, this is a challenge actually, Allowing yourself to not be too hasty, especially as an Aries, which is a fire energy. Like Aries is also a cardinal energy. Like we can be fucking hasty, okay? Um, but allowing time to run, allowing things to play out so you really can see the truth behind the situation. You can really see things clearly, okay? And if you do resonate with that um, that Pisces reading, the moon also came out. The moon and the five of wands came out in the first half of the reading in the first, the first set of surrounding energies. And to me, that was talking about there's chaos, there's confusion, there's differing of opinion, there might be some, com there might be some competition, but with the moon there coupling it, things are not as they seem. So here in this situation, if you do resonate with that reading this is absolutely connected to it with the ten of swords and the ace i'm sorry the ten of pentacles and the ace of swords because it's allowing time to play out and allowing things to play out so that you really can see things as clearly as possible okay closing message or potential outcome here for you aries in the second half of your reading you have strength leo energy potentially you could have leo in your chart you could be resin you could be connecting with a leo but strength here is about Taming the beast, not being too hasty, Aries, okay? Staying strong, maybe even staying stoic and allowing the situation to run its course. The strength is coupled with ah, the five of cups. There might be some disappointment there may have been some disappointment already in this situation. But you see, regardless of whatever, whatever disappointment you may experience, Aries, you need to have the strength and the stoicism, or maybe even this the cross watcher, you need to have the strength and the stoicism to recognize that whatever spills over was no longer needed or was not necessary. You still have those two cups behind you. And to be quite honest, that's probably what, we, what you want. The two cups, you and your counterpart, not all this extraneous bullshit, right? So uh, also someone is facing some sort of loss somehow. Someone is facing some sort of loss maybe in terms of this relationship, maybe in terms of the past, maybe you could be, especially with this King of Swords and the Nine of Swords energy, you could be fearful that things may turn out like they did in the past, but you're needing to let it play out. Your challenge here is time, letting time roll on so you can see clearly what exactly is going on around you or what this relationship could entail for you. 
And also there could be some disappointment or loss within the relationship already. But still, I feel like this is still pretty in the beginning phases of it. So don't worry about it. Because I don't, even if you have, if you've experienced some sort of setback, um, some sort of loss in the relationship, all is not lost because you still have the two of cups here. Okay? You still have the connection with this person most likely. And if you don't have the connection with this person any longer, there are other connections out there for you to take advantage of or for you to experience. Just focus on learning the lessons of whatever you experience so that you don't repeat that cycle. Okay. This is a good reading, Aries. This is a really, really good reading. So let's close out your reading here with your Oracle guidance. Best message, please, spirit, for my Aries, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. For the month of May 2019. Last shuffle. Here we go. For my Aries, sun, moon, rising, and Venus, May 2019. Best message, there it is. See, you got, ooh, hey, look at all that fire. Card number 44, Goddess Bastet and Cat's Eye. Sacred pleasure. Mm-hmm, yes. Get it, honey. All right, let's see what we've got. Sacred pleasure. We bring you the empowerment of sacred pleasure. It is said that the spirit had to be enticed into the body to give up its complete freedom and willingly take on an experience of limitation that could lead to divine growth. It needed to deal, it needed the deal to be sweetened. So music was created, music that could only be felt and expressed through the body. Spirit jumped in like a flash and life was created. There is more life that can be created in you and your world. Although there are undoubtedly struggles as a natural part of opening up to more life, there is divine sweetness too. That is the gift of sacred pleasure. This is the pleasure that gives you joy in your aliveness. It is innocent, sensual, and life-affirming. It is time for you to receive more of this. The Oracle says it's time to put a little sugar in your bowl. I know that's right, Aries. You better get it, honey. <laughs> All right, guys. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. My email is in the description box below. I hope you guys have a great month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of June. Yales. Take care. Mwah! Bye. Mm -hmm.